Today, we're talking about sex. Ooh, how juicy! But this video isn't about regular sex, though. We'll be talking about a magical and spiritual practice known as sacred sexuality. You'll learn what sacred sexuality is, then we're going to go over the five ways in which sacred sex is different from regular sex, and then I'm going to share my top seven tips to help you practice sacred sexuality by yourself or with a partner. Coming up! Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the Heart Alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell so you get notified as soon as I publish new content. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram, where I share weekly tips and advice that you won't find here on YouTube. On to part one of the video, what's sacred sexuality? Okay, so before I get into the topic further, I want to leave a really important reminder here. Okay, so here's your first reminder, ding, ding. And the reminder is that sacred sexuality can be practiced solo or with a partner or with partners, multiple partners. Okay, so I want to really leave this note here right at the beginning of the video because I don't want you to feel like you need to be in a relationship or you need to have another partner in order to be able to practice sacred sexuality. In fact, what you're going to learn in this video is that learning how to practice sacred sexuality solo is really important for then you to be able to share that sacred sexuality with another partner or with, well, with multiple partners, okay? So I wanted to leave this side note here. Sacred sexuality can be practiced solo or with a partner, so let's get that out of the way. So if you're not with a partner right now, this video is still for you. It's actually a really common mistake that people make that when they're not with a partner, they usually wait to learn about sex or to learn about sexual energy when they're with someone. <laughs> and when they're not with someone, they kind of just leave sex kind of to the side. And what this video is going to help you do is to understand that your sexual energy has to be explored within yourself. Learning how to move sexual energy, learning how to understand your body is actually a pillar for you then to be able to have a sacred sexual connection with another human being if you want to. If you want to have a solo uh, practice, you can continue to have a solo practice indefinitely also, okay? So uh, this is actually very common in the spiritual tradition known as Tantra. So when we talk about sacred sexuality, a lot of times uh, this beautiful knowledge that and wisdom that's brought to us about sacred sexuality comes from uh, the tradition of Tantra, which came out of Hinduism and Buddhism in the East thousands thousands of years ago. This is one of my favorite spiritual traditions on the planet. And Tantra talks about solo, a solo path and a partnered path. So Tantra actually teaches you that you could do one or the other and that there's nothing wrong or inherently better about one path versus the other. All right. So this is going to be an important takeaway for you in this video is to understand and to learn how to master sexual energy within yourself, whether you're solo or partnered and learning to master that sexual energy before you share it with someone else. Okay. Now let's get into the definition of sacred sexuality. So the term sacred sexuality, let's break it down and let's start with the word sacred. Okay. So the word sacred or the term sacred means that this practice has the potential to take you somewhere. That's what the word sacred means. When you're talking about the sacredness of something, you're talking about the capacity of that something to take you beyond, to take you somewhere. And in the case of sacred sexuality, what's happening is we are using sexual energy to take us beyond ourselves into a union with the divine, into a deeper connection with the divine God, source, the universe, however you want to call it that way. Okay, so here's a, a, a little bit of a better definition, a more concise definition of what sacred sexuality is now that we know what the word sacred means. So sacred sexuality is the practice of embodying the highest expression of divine love. 
I love this definition because literally what it means is that we are using sexual energy or sexual connection, either with ourselves or with someone else. We're using that sexual connection as a means to take us into a deeper connection with God or with the divine. We're, it's almost like we're using sexual energy, we're using the body as a vehicle of meditation, as a vehicle of, of kind of a transcendental meditation that takes us into higher states of consciousness through the practice of using sexual energy. Now, going back to one of the oldest spiritual traditions that talks about sacred sexuality, it's the practice of Tantra that we had just talked about. In Tantra, one of the beautiful pillars of Tantra is that, uh, according to Tantra tradition, everything is sacred. Everything is spirit in tantric tradition. So basically what this means is that according to tantra, everything has the capacity to take you into a connection with source or with God, okay? Tantra has this beautiful understanding that everything, including your body and including sex, has the potential to take you into a higher, um, a, a kind of a, a closer, more intimate relationship with the divine. Now, notice how different this is from literally every other religious tradition on the planet when it comes to sacredness. If you look at any other religious tradition on the planet, there's usually a really strong focus on sex being something dirty, on sex being something that's only used to create children, on how there's so much shame associated with the sexual uh, sexual practice, on how the body is really kind of vilified and considered dirty and unholy. This is very common in religious traditions around the world. But in Tantra, that's not true at all. In Tantra, your body is this beautiful, pure vessel that can be used to come into closer relationship with the divine and the body and sexual energy is itself sacred and holy. There's nothing unholy or dirty about sex or sexual energy in the tradition of Tantra. So here's an affirmation or a mantra that I love using in order to understand really um, one of the pillars of Tantra, which is that the body is holy and the body is sacred. So here's an affirmation that I love to use that, that will help you too. Sacred sexuality teaches us to honor the body as a temple of spirit. I love this affirmation so much because it really helps you understand that your body is so pure and it's sacred and it's holy and that there has never been anything wrong with it. And for so many of us, I would say, even if you're not religious, you probably still have this religious templating because it's so predominant on the planet that even if you don't practice religion right now, Chances are that you have this templating on you without even realizing. And it's the template of, of having shame around sexuality, but also of, of having um, a kind of criticisms and considering the body as not being holy or not being sacred, considering the body as being lower. Even if you are not religious, within spirituality and personal development circles, sometimes you'll still see that there's a predominance of mind over matter. You see, just in this statement, mind over matter. What's happening here is there's a hierarchy. So the mind is considered superior to the body. And, and this isn't religious. This is found in a lot of personal development circles. So even if you're not religious and you have just been following personal development circles, you still may be templated with this understanding that the body is lower, that the body isn't as good as the mind or isn't as superior as the mind. And so we need to clean these things out when we're talking about Tantra or sec sacred sexuality because you're literally in sacred sexuality. You are coming into the divine through your beautiful body, and you cannot come into deep connection with the divine if you are judging your body as being unholy, dirty, if you think sex is shameful, if you think sexual energy is shameful. It's going to be really hard for you to come into sacred sexuality because your relationship with your body needs to be pure in order to come into that deep, deep connection with the divine through your body. Now, this wisdom about sacred sexuality has really been lost in the West for a really long time, for thousands of years. This was particularly exacerbated uh, during the uprise of religion around the world. Specifically, the Inquisition was, was a big turning point for repression of sexual energy. Okay, So what ended up happening was religions kind of separated us, helped to separate us from our bodies. There was this kind of separation between spirit and matter. So spirit is over here and matter is over here. 
here. And matter isn't holy. There's something wrong with matter, and it needs to be transcended in order for you to get into spirit. That's what religions have taught us. But Tantra is one of the few religious traditions on the planet that actually incentivizes and and talks about there being no difference between matter and spirit. They're one and the same. Matter is spirit. Matter is spirit infused into the material world. Okay. And so what this division ended up creating was when we separated spirit from matter, when we separated what's holy from what's physical, what ended up happening is we created huge repression of one of the primal drives that the human being has, which is the drive for sexual intimacy. That was lost because it was repressed in us through this separation, this supposed separation between spirit and matter. So we have to clean this energy up so that we understand that matter and spirit are one and the same. The more that you come into right relationship with your beautiful body, then you can go deeper into this sexual intimacy. The more you can go into sexual intimacy, the more you can commune with the divine. Sacred sexuality can really be considered what's known as a peak experience. So I don't know if you've ever uh, heard this term, peak experience, but peak experience is generally referred to altered states of consciousness that we can enter through certain practices. So, for example, sometimes, uh, you know, psychedelics um, create peak experiences where you take a psychedelic or you microdose or uh, maybe you're in meditation. It doesn't just have to be psychedelics, but maybe deep meditation. There are a bunch of different practices that bring you into what's known as peak experiences. And these are experiences that transcend kind of the human form and take you right into connection to source. And sacred sexuality is one of those peak experiences. And the reason that sec sacred sexuality works so well in helping us come into these deep states of consciousness is because on some level, all of us have this longing for reunion or merging with source, okay? And what's interesting here is that we all have this longing, whether we're atheists, whether we're non-religious, non-spiritual, we all have this beautiful longing to merge with the oneness of the universe, okay? So we have this longing to merge with God, with oneness, with the universe, however you like to define that. There's an internal drive for us when we're down here on earth where we're in this reality of duality or of separation. There's a part of us that's always longing to merge back to God. And sacred sexuality provides a vehicle for you to feel that, that and experience that in the now moment, which is what makes it uh, sacred sexuality considered to be a peak experience. On to part two of the video, sacred sex versus regular sex. Okay, so before I get into, I'm going to share uh, the five ways in which uh, sacred sex is different from regular sex. I'm going to get into those five ways, but I wanted to leave you with a little side note here. Okay, so side note, ding, ding. And the side note is that there's nothing wrong with regular sex, okay? So I'm not talking about the sacred sex uh, versus regular sex as a comparison between one being better or higher or holier than the other one, okay? Sometimes uh, a lot of us just feel like having regular sex, and that's totally fine. There's no judgment on that. The, the, the way that I'm talking about sacred sex versus regular sex is to show you that there's a different way of using sexual energy. And in fact, when you learn about sacred sexuality, the likelihood that you're probably not going to want to have regular sex anymore is pretty high just because of the peak experiences that you can have with uh, sacred sexuality. So the more you go into it, when people go into sacred sexuality, they tend to want to not go back uh, to regular sex anymore. But this isn't a, a judgment on regular sex. All right, so I wanted to leave this side note here. They are both valid and they're both valid expressions of human sexuality, regardless of where you are uh, on your journey. All right, so both valid expressions of human sexuality. Okay, so now on to the top five ways in which sacred sex is different from regular sex, okay? The first way is that sacred sex isn't really for self-gratification, okay? So this is very, very different. This is probably the, the, reason, the way that in which sacred sex is most different from regular sex, and that is that sacred sex isn't really used as a mode of self-gratification. Now, if you think about it, that's totally different from what uh, regular sexual encounters are all about. So when you have regular sex, the, the driving act of wanting to have regular sex is uh, orgasm. So it's self-gratification. So I usually have sex with someone and my goal to when I have sex with someone is to reach an orgasm or to have that, that 
bodily response of, of an orgasm, which is self-gratification. With sacred sex, it goes way beyond that. So when you come into sexual contact, a sacred sexual contact with another person, your goal is not to get off. <laughs> so that's pretty much the icing on the cake, and it does happen. Orgasm happens during sacred sexuality, but that's not really the goal. That's not what you're, what you're aiming for when you get into sacred sexuality. Sacred sexuality is about going into the body and using the body as a vehicle for merging, for coming into higher states of consciousness, merging with God, merging with the universe, and or coming into higher states states of consciousness with yourself, with a partner, just you and God, or a you and a partner in God. It depends if you're solo or if you're partnered, but the goal is very different. It's not self-gratification, although that happens, the orgasm will happen, or it may not during sacred sexuality, but the goal is you're transcending that and you're going into higher states of consciousness and deeper states of merging and of intimacy and of connection with yourself uh, or with the partner. The second way in which sacred sex is different from regular sex is through bonding. Okay, so sacred sex has a really, really deep component of bonding with yourself or with a partner. Again, remember, you can do this solo. So sacred sexuality, there's a deep level of bonding that you don't find in regular sex. And what I mean is the bonding, it's not just physical bonding. There's energetic bonding happening uh, during sacred sex. And it's a bonding that's so deep and so spiritual that what ends up happening is when you practice sacred sexuality uh, with another partner, this is especially pertaining when this happens with another partner, the, the level of bonding can be so, so deep that your chakras end up docking to each other. Okay, so it's, a, it's what's called a chakra docking. And that means that your energy centers, the main energy centers in your body, which are called chakras, they dock together with the chakras of your partner or partners that you're practicing sacred sexuality with. Okay, and this, this docking is a very, very deep level of bonding. And this docking of the chakras, this merging of the energy systems between partners, what ends up happening is that merging of the energy system accelerates the merging with God or the merging with the universe. Okay, now. If you're practicing this solo, you're not going to have the docking with the energy system of another person or the chakras of another person, but your energy system is still activated for bonding and merging with source energy, with the divine, a lot more than if you're just having regular sex or if you're just, you know, masturbating without any um, kind of without any knowledge or understanding of sacred sexuality and no intention of doing it. All right. So if you're just doing regular sex, then usually what happens is the level of bonding, the level of energy merging is a lot uh, more diminished. If you're new to chakras and don't even know what the heck they are, uh, don't have no idea what the chakras are, I shot a whole video on the seven main chakras of the body. I'm going to leave a link in the description box below so you can go into the chakras deeper because that's actually going to help you understand and learn how to practice sacred sexuality a lot more. I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below so you can watch after this one. The third way in which which sacred sex is different is through energy movement. Okay, so when we're having sacred sex, the energy, sexual energy, is actually moving up the body. And it's moving up the body because we're also consciously participating in that movement and we're consciously involved in that movement. Now, notice how totally different this is from when you're having regular sex. You're not even thinking about energy probably when you're having regular sex. And usually during regular sex, the energy is pooled. Okay, so think about this. When you're having regular sex and it's not sacred at all, you're not even thinking about the spiritual component, the sex is more localized down into the sexual chakra, the genital area. So even if you do have an orgasm with regular sex, it's usually very localized down low in the system in that genital uh, sexual chakra kind of area, the pelvic area. And that is very, very kind of, uh, it's, it's just a tiny little hiccup compared to the levels of ecstasy that you can have when you're practicing sacred sexuality. And that's because during sacred sexuality, you are moving energy. So the energy doesn't stay just down in the genitals. The energy starts to move up and up and up and up. The more sexual energy moves up, 
the more refined it gets. So uh, remember this word refined, okay? Because what ends up happening is sexual energy gets more refined as it moves up, especially when it reaches the heart chakra. So as soon as sexual energy reaches the heart chakra, now you're really, because the heart chakra is your portal of connection, of union, of love. And so when that sexual energy reaches the heart chakra and above, you're having totally ecstatic and blissful experiences of connection, of merging with your partner or if you're solo of merging with God, okay? And so the this energy movement is very conscious in sacred sexuality. In fact, in Tantra, a lot of times practitioners of Tantra are, are taught how to delay orgasm so that they can move more energy and accelerate the energy around their body and amplify the energy. So they're taught how to delay orgasm so that that energy can get more and more amplified in them, okay? And so this is very very, very conscious in sacred sexuality, this doesn't happen in regular sex. The fourth way in which sacred sex is different is through ecstatic orgasms, okay? So remember I said a little while ago that uh, sacred sex isn't really about the self-gratification, but you still have orgasms and the orgasms are amazing. They're much more amazing than you can ever have with regular sex. And so what's happening here, the reason that the, these orgasms are so amazing and so ecstatic is precisely because the energy is being consciously moved up. So when you have an orgasm during sacred sex, because you've been uh, consciously moving the energy and consciously amplifying the energy and moving it up, when you do have an orgasm, it's like, uh, it's like the Big Bang is happening here. So it's just this explosive, full body, ecstatic, beyond the body kind of orgasm that's really hard to, <laughs> it's really hard to describe unless you have it. So you're going to have to experience this on your own. But when you do have an ecstatic orgasm from sacred sex, you will know the difference immediately from an orgasm uh, with regular sex. Okay. And so these ecstatic orgasms are happening precisely because this energy is being kind of amplified. Um, usually during sacred sex, the sessions last very long. So people sometimes don't really realize this, but a Tantra session, a Tantra lovemaking session can last hours. Okay. So let me repeat that again. A Tantric lovemaking session or a sacred uh, sexual session can last hours hours. Now imagine how different that is from a regular, uh, from having regular sex. Usually when you have regular sex, you'll be lucky, especially for women, because usually men ejaculate a lot faster, but you'll be lucky if you have like two or three minutes <laughs> of actual, of actual sex before everybody has an orgasm and then let's move on with our day. And so when it comes to sacred sexuality, though, the, the sessions are much longer, and this means that the energy is being moved and these ecstatic orgasms happen. But there's another uh, reason why the orgasms are so ecstatic. So I'm going to leave a little side note here. So ding, ding, side note on this one. Another reason why the orgasms are so ecstatic during uh, sacred sex is because practitioners are taught when they're having an orgasm, they don't let the energy of the orgasm dissipate outwards. Usually when we have a regular orgasm, we just let the energy, because we're unconscious of the spiritual aspect and the energy aspect, when we have an orgasm, we just kind of let the energy dissipate. When you learn sacred sexuality, you learn to actually not let the energy of the orgasm just dissipate outward. You learn to contain it within yourself so that that energy continues to amplify and to energize you. So it's very common in Tantra that practitioners are taught to use the energy of orgasm instead of letting it explode outward. They actually contain it within themselves and that energy, that orgasmic energy energizes their entire body. And this is one of the reasons why orgasms are so ecstatic during sacred sex. The fifth and last way in which sacred sex is different from regular sex is through expanded states of consciousness. Okay, so let me explain that one a little bit. So when you are practicing sacred sexuality, because you're not solely focused on the whole self-gratification component, what ends up happening is you go deeply into your body and through going into your body and connecting with the divine or connecting with a partner, what ends 
ends up happening is through that connection, you access higher states of consciousness or altered states of consciousness that you don't normally access in your everyday life. So the sacred sexual uh, session is being actually used to go into deeper connection with your body, with the body of your partner, or if you're solo, just right with, with the divine. And you enter these altered states of consciousness that you're not normally able to, to access during everyday life. And so this is why these expanded states of consciousness occur during sacred sexuality, because now we're focusing on the spiritual and energy aspect aspect uh, of, of the sexual session. So when we're focused on the spiritual and energy aspect, it allows us to go deeper. It allows us to go well beyond any kind of, of regular sex that we can have with another person, where again, the energy is really localized. We're in, we're in it more for the self-gratification. And so in that kind of sex, uh, your ability to reach higher or expanded states of consciousness is pretty non-existent, all right? But through sacred sexuality, you can absolutely reach higher states of consciousness. And that's why sacred sexuality is so delicious once you learn how to do it. On to part three of the video, how to have sacred sex. So I want to leave a little reminder. This is a repetition of the reminder I've left here, but uh, I'm going to remind you again, ding, ding, reminder. You can use these tips if you're solo or with a partner, okay? So these tips can be practiced solo if you are not with a partner, all right? So keep that in mind. Uh, whenever we're talking about sacred sexuality, keep that in mind that you can master sacred sexuality solo first, and actually you should uh, before you master it with a partner. So here are the seven, top seven tips that I'm going to share with you on how to kind of start practicing and learning and having sacred sex. Tip number one is to honor yourself. This is, oh my gosh, this is so important. There's a reason that I put it here as first because this is the foundation of sacred sexuality is learning how to honor yourself. If you do not honor yourself, especially your body, you cannot have sacred sex, all right? So I'm gonna repeat that again because that's how important it is. If you do not honor your body, you can't have sacred sex because your body is the temple. It's the container where that sacred sex is occurring. And so if you have any kind of negative uh, opinion or negative judgment, if you have any kind of religious templating that tells you that your body is dirty or unholy, it's going to be really hard for you to have sacred sex because you're literally, it's almost like you're defiling the very temple. You're defiling the temple of your soul by considering it dirty. Okay. And so it's hard to come into any kind of merger or union with God. If you have any kind of judgment about yourself, right? That judgment, that criticism in itself creates a separation between you and the divine because the divine views you as this beautiful, perfect, incredible divine being. There's nothing wrong with you in the eyes of God or in the eyes of source. And so every time you see something wrong with you, especially when it comes to sacred sexuality, if you see something wrong with your body, you're creating that separation and it's going to be really hard for you to experience the deliciousness of sacred sexuality. So to help you out with this, I'm going to leave you with an important mantra. If you have, this is going to help clean out any kind of templating that you have around your body, not being good enough, your body, not being beautiful, having any shame around sex, uh, around sex. This is especially important for women because there's a lot of shame created in women uh, around sexual energy. So this mantra is going to help you clean out any kind of religious templating, anything that you may have that, that kind of casts a judgment on your body. All right. So here's the mantra. You can write this down and even repeat this every day in the mirror as you're practicing sacred sex. Sexuality. And the mantra is, my body is the holy temple of my soul in this lifetime. Oh, I love this mantra so much. My body is the holy temple of my soul in this lifetime. Your soul venerates your body. Your soul adores your body. Your body is literally the house that contains your soul in this lifetime. It's so loved. It's so honored 
There's nothing impure about it. There's nothing dirty about it. And there is nothing dirty about sex or sexual energy either. Okay. So, so this, this honoring of yourself is a crucial first step for you to create that container for sacred sexuality to then take place. This honoring thyself is really, really important because this is a way for us also to, there's a lot of trash that we have to clear from ourselves that come from religious templating. Even if you don't think of yourself as religious. There is so much religious templating that's been left over in the energetics of the planet from thousands of years of religious control around sex that all of us have it, whether we're religious or not. And so we need to clear these templates. We really need to clear these templates. And I'm going to give you um, actually a mantra or a prayer that you can say every day. This is a healing mantra that's going to help you clear all of the templates that you may have. We want to clear all that crap that you have that's that has any shame, uh, if you feel any kind of inadequacy, if you feel like you are unholy or like you're not good enough in the eyes of God, this, this um, prayer or this affirmation, this mantra is going to help you clear that out, okay? So maybe write this down and maybe do a little ceremony or just repeat this in the mirror with a lot of intention. This is going to help you clear out any templates that's keeping you from, from honoring yourself, especially your body. I clear any templates that dishonor or demean my body. Okay. I clear any templates that dishonor or demean my body. Oh, this is so, so important. And it's not just religious templating. So we have a lot of cultural templating, especially around women, but also men have this templating of shaming their own bodies, of always thinking of themselves as not good enough. We've all been held to unrealistic standards, whether we're men or with, or we're women. If we're women, we have these unrealistic standards of, you know, size zero models that are being paint brushed on Photoshop. And so we have these unrealistic, uh, um, examples of what it, the only way to be a woman or the only way to have a body is through a size zero, looking a certain way, having big boobs. Uh, so all of us have these standards, but men also have these templates, you know, they have to have a six pack, they have to have big biceps, they have to have, you know, chiseled bodies. And so both men and women have cultural and societal pressures for their bodies to be a certain way. And these are totally unrealistic expectations. So of course, the majority of us, 99.9% of people don't fall into those, into those standards that are held up for, for physical bodies. And what's going to end up happening is because those standards are so realistic, the majority of us are going to feel like failures when it comes to our bodies. And we're going to start dishonoring and disrespecting our bodies and not liking the skin that we're in. Okay. So this, this uh, prayer is going to help you clear those templates, whether they're religious templates or whether they're body image templates that we all need to clear in order to come into right relationship with our bodies, which is how we have sacred sex in the first place. After you clear the templates uh, through that prayer or that mantra that we just talked about, now it's time to continue your self-care um, and the honoring of your body by going into more simple things like being, um, being aware of what you eat, eating healthy, taking care of your body resting when your body needs rest, just really learning how to honor your body by sleeping well, eating well, exercising, just really taking care of your body in these more mundane ways. This is also really important. It may not feel spiritual to you, but this is really important in the honoring of your body, right? So, you know, just a common example that, that may seem like it has nothing to do with the body, but if you have a car, you regularly need to go in and maybe change the oil or just have have the car, uh, you know, looked and see if anything's wrong with it. This is, this is common when we have things to kind of have regular maintenance of things. So they last longer. It's the same thing with our beautiful bodies to be able to honor it, to take care of it, not just so our bodies last longer, but so that we're in a state of more health and vitality. This is showing love and respect and honoring of the body. The more you honor your body, the more you're going to be preparing yourself for sacred sex. Tip number two is picking the right partner. Okay. Now this is if you're having, if you're having sacred sex with someone else, right? If you're on the solo path, then this tip, you can listen to it if you're looking for a partner. Uh, but this tip is specifically for people who are looking to have sacred sexuality with a partner, right? Pick the right partner. It seems like such a common sense thing, but this is a really important tip because a lot of times what happens is, and this is especially, this happens with a lot of women is that sometimes 
It doesn't just have to be with women. It could be with anyone, really. When we are prepared for sacred sexuality, sometimes we don't realize that maybe we're with a partner that's not prepared for sacred sexuality if we're already in a relationship, or maybe we're single and we're looking for, for a sacred sexual partner, but we're not picking the right ones, okay? And the, what I talk about the, the picking the right partner is you really want someone that's at the same level of consciousness and wants the same thing as you. If you go go out to a bar and you pick someone up and you take them home and you're like, Hey, you get to the door of your house and you say, Hey, I'm just interested in sacred sex. And the person may look at you and go like, what the hell is that? And I didn't sign up for this. I just want to have regular sex. <laughs> okay. So this is, this is something for you to really think about. If you're in a relationship before you started studying sa- uh, sacred sexuality, and if you've been having regular sex with your partner for God knows how many years, and then suddenly you start to want to go deeper. Well, what if your partner doesn't want to, or what if your partner isn't capable of accompanying you in that level of connection and in that level of intimacy? Sacred sexuality is very scary sometimes if you're not prepared to go into it. So try not to force the partner if the partner isn't prepared, right? So I'm going to leave you a list of questions and things to consider. Maybe you can journal about these things um, having to do with picking the right partner, okay? And this is going to help you decipher whether the relationship that you're in is open for sacred sexuality or bringing in a partner that's, that's open for sacred sexuality. So here's a list of questions to help you out with this. Is the partner interested in going deeper? Is the partner spiritual? Can the partner match your level of consciousness? Is the partner interested in exploring sacred sexuality? Okay, so these are really important questions for you to maybe journal about. Probably the most important is, is the partner capable of accompanying you in sacred sexuality? And When I say capable of accompanying you, I don't mean that that person is less than you and you're superior and that person's inferior. That's not what I mean. This isn't a judgment on the value of the person. But sometimes what happens, this is especially crucial if you're already in a relationship with someone and suddenly you start to develop spiritually and the other person is not really on the same level as you, and then you bring in sacred sexuality, this can actually create more of a rift in the relationship because the other person isn't prepared to go deeper. In fact, when you entered relationship, sacred sexuality wasn't even on the table. <laughs> so that person may be like, I, I, I don't know what you're asking of me. I, I have no idea and I'm not interested in it. Okay. And so you want to make sure that the, that your partner is capable of going into these depths of, of intimacy. Again, sacred sexuality is very scary. Sacred sexuality can be very scary. It's not always, but it can be very scary, especially if you are kind of used to having walls up, protecting yourself, um, kind of masking yourself or not being authentic, this is going to be a practice that's very intimidating. All right. So picking the right partner, super, super, super important. If you're not with the right partner, sacred sex is going to be really difficult partnered. You can practice it solo. So if you're with someone that maybe isn't interested or can't accompany you into the whole uh, sacred sexuality, then maybe consider the solo path for a little while and then figure out what's going to happen in the relationship one way or another. Tip number three is to drop walls. <laughs> so one of the most intimidating things I think about sacred sexuality is that sacred sexuality is actually quite demanding. All right. So it's demanding in what way? In what way is it demanding? So sacred sexuality is demanding because it requires authenticity. All right. So sacred sexuality demands authenticity. And the reason is because I'm, I'm connecting to God or to another person, to God through another person or with another person, the more that I connect at this level, at this depth, authenticity is required because any kind of mask or any kind of wall, any kind of armoring of the heart that I have up, any kind of, of, um, kind of armoring that I put up, I'm going to be creating a barrier between myself and God or myself and another. And so that barrier is going to dissolve the sacredness of the experience. Okay. So, so drop the walls, meaning that when you enter into sacred sex, when you enter into sacred sexuality, you have to learn to surrender to being completely naked, not just naked on a body level, but being completely naked and being open to showing up in front of God or 
or in front of another person as 100% yourself, 100% authentic, without any fantasies, without any, any hiding, without any masks, nothing like that. You are just open to being 100% authentic. And you're, if you're with a partner, they are open to being 100% authentic and surrendering to you also in that moment. So here's a mantra, an affirmation that you can write down because this is how important the dropping of walls is. Okay. So, so write down this mantra or at least receive these words as I'm saying them to you. I'm not in sacred sexuality until I allow myself to be fully seen. Oh, this is such a powerful mantra. Until I allow myself to be fully seen, 100% who I am, I'm not in sacred sexuality. Because if there's any shame, if I hold any shame, if I hold any criticism, if I hold any judgments, if I hold any masks or any armoring, again, I'm creating a layer of separation between myself and God or myself and a partner. And when I'm creating that layer of separation, I'm not creating that union or that merger that, that is required in sacred sexuality. I'm not able to go deep when I'm wearing those, uh, when, I'm, when I have shame or when I have criticisms or when I'm wearing any kind of masks or I'm trying to protect myself or shield myself, okay? So I have to be totally open to be seen exactly as I am. And if I'm not open to that, then I'm going to work on that solo before I enter into sec uh, sacred sexuality with another partner because it's less intimidating when I do that myself first so that then I can show up in front of a sacred partner ready to be fully seen without feeling shame or without shutting down. Tip number four is to intend to connect. Okay. So when you intend to connect now, if you're doing this solo, you're connecting to God or to source or to the universe. If you're doing a partner, you're connecting to your partner. Your intention to connect is absolutely crucial because it's through that connection, through that connection with your body, with God, with another partner. It's through that connection that you go into the sacredness of sexuality and the, that you can go into those altered states of consciousness and to those higher states of consciousness of merging with the divine. Okay. So, connection is very, very important. And, and we all know that when you're having regular sex, sometimes there is no connection at all. You can have physical sex with someone and not be connected to them at all. So this connection is very, very crucial in sacred sexuality. And the connection is very, very deep. All right. So I'm going to give you a couple of ways uh, of, of cultivating connection, whether you're solo or with a partner. Um, and the first way is through anointing. I love the practice of anointing. So what anointing is, is you're going to grab a substance like an oil or um, a floral water or just water or even uh, sacred ash. Okay. So ash is used in religions a lot to kind of mark uh, the person during religious ceremonies. You can use ash also. So what you're going to do is you're going to anoint yourself, whether your forehead, you're going to anoint, maybe put a little bit of oil on, on your your body, on your heart chakra, or on your forehead. And what this is going to do is it's sort of a little ceremony. It's going to symbolize your connection, your intention to connect with another person or to connect with God. You can anoint yourself. If you're with a partner, you anoint the partner and the partner anoints you. And what this is doing is it's already creating that space of sacredness. It's creating that container of sacredness by just using this practice. Another way to connect is through eye gazing. This is very common in Tantra. Uh, so in Tantra sessions, uh, eye gazing is actually used as an entry portal into sacred sexuality. And so what eye gazing is, is you're going to literally stand in front uh, of a partner if you're with a partner and you're just going to look into their eyes and, and you're going to do this for extended periods of time. Sometimes eye gazing can last minutes where you don't break eye contact. This is really intimidating sometimes, especially if you're holding up any walls. As soon as you start to do the eye gazing, it can feel really intimidated, intimidating, and you may want to look away. A lot of times this happens when you're first learning how to eye gaze. If you're alone, if you don't have a partner, you can just put a mirror in front of you and you can look into your own eyes reflected back to you. So this eye gazing is still possible, even if you're doing this solo. All right. But the eye gazing and the anointing is a great way for you to create that connection with another human or with God, um, uh, herself. And if you do this connection exercise, then you're starting to go deeper and deeper into the energy of sacred sexuality. Tip number five is to engage the senses. Okay. So here's an important side note about sacred sexuality. You are never in a hurry. Sacred sexuality is slow and deliberate. 
okay? Really important to remember this. Sacred sex is slow and deliberate. You're engaging the senses. So a lot of touch is important, stroking, touch, um, but engage all senses. So a lot of times, um, sometimes people will actually use food. So they'll have strawberries or they'll have chocolate with them and to engage taste. A lot of, I think the most important, probably the most important, of the senses to engage is touch and eyes. Okay, those those, but engage all senses. So sometimes, if you're having, um, if you're preparing yourself to have sacred sex, a lot of times people will have some uh, some aromatherapy oils or some incense. They'll burn incense in the room, so they're engaging smell. Um, they'll engage texture. So sometimes they'll have you know lush um, uh, sheets on their bed to engage texture. Uh, a lot of touching. Touch is really, really important in sacred sexuality. Slow and deliberate. What it starts to do is when you're touching another person or yourself, it starts to engage kundalini energy. This is the central sexual energy of the human. And it starts to engage kundalini energy. And that kundalini energy is usually pulled low in your system in that in that tip of the spine area and that pelvic area too. And you can start circulating kundalini energy by just touching or eye gazing. But, but engage all of the senses. Sacred sex is a multisensorial experience. And the more time you give to all of these different slow and deliberate engaging of all the senses, the more you're moving energy and you're coming into a state of union with a partner or with the divine. One of the reasons that touch is so important during sacred sexuality is that the hands are very, very strong conductors of energy. So when you touch someone, you're actually moving energy across their body. You're starting to circulate uh, pr uh, prana or kundalini energy. You're starting to circulate because the hands are such powerful conductors of energy. So the more that you do this, again, nice and slowly, the more that you do this, the more you're starting to circulate and you're amplifying that sexual energy, which then creates a bigger container for uh, these ecstatic states of consciousness and for energy merging between yourself and the divine or yourself and a partner. So here's a little pro tip, all right? So pro tip, ding, ding, pro tip that I want to leave here. And that is to remember that in sacred sex, mindful foreplay is crucial, <laughs> okay? So foreplay is crucial. So a lot of times in regular sex, foreplay is just kind of considered like, you know, a means to an end. <laughs> I'm just going to use a little bit of foreplay so then I can get off and just move on with my day. But in sacred sexuality, foreplay is actually one of the most important aspects a lot of times it's more important than any kind of penetration type of sex that you can have, all right? So it's, it's so, so crucial, and it has to be mindful and, again, slow. So, again, it's not uncommon for sacred sex sessions to last hours, and it's because the, the, the partners or the people practicing that, that session know how to cultivate energy. They know how to use the senses. They know how to move slowly in foreplay. And so this is crucial to pull up the energy, create connection, and start getting into uh, to these higher states of consciousness and emerging with the divine. Tip number six is to move energy up. Okay, so eventually, as you're as you're moving through and you're starting to circulate this energy through touch, through senses, through eye gazing, through love making, what's going to end up happening is the energy is going to start getting amplified and more amplified. And here, what you're going to do is you're going to delay orgasm, okay? So you're mindfully not thinking about, oh, let me just, you know, quickly have sex so I can orgasm. No, now you're in a completely di different state of consciousness. So you're delaying orgasm and the energy is now going to start to move up. You're doing this consciously. The energy will actually naturally, as you get good at this, the sexual energy will naturally start to move up on its own. But initially, you may need to be a little bit more conscious of moving energy up. So you may feel the urge to orgasm and it's a really, sometimes it's a really strong bodily urge, but you're just going to take a nice deep breath and you're going to consciously move energy up your spine, especially reaching the heart and above. Okay. That's when things really start to get delicious. Okay. And there are two ways in which you can start moving energy during a sexual, um, during a sacred sex session. One is through touch. We already talked about that. Okay. So the stroking of, of the skin, hands are a really strong conductor of energy. The stroking of the skin will help move energy. So you can actually take your hands. And if you're doing this yourself, you can just move from your genital up 
up, up. Or if you're doing it on a partner, you just move the energy up, 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 and maybe touch the heart and just come up here. When you're doing that, you're moving the energy up, all right? So if touch is a really important way. Another way is through just conscious awareness. So if you're if you're making love to someone and that partner again is on the same a place that you are, so they're on the same. Uh, you're both having sacred sex, so these are both conscious partners that both know how to move energy up. And as you're making love, you're both moving energy consciously, just with your conscious mind. You're moving energy up as that's happening. Okay. So this movement of energy up is something that, again, you're going to need to practice solo or with a partner. This is, you're going to get really used to this. And then pretty soon it'll be very easy for you to move this energy up without having that excessive, uh, kind of urge to orgasm and just dissipate the energy. You're going to get really good at moving this energy, especially up to the, if you can get it up to the heart and above, you're on a whole other level when it comes to altered states of consciousness and union with the divine. The last tip, tip number seven, is to nest. Okay, so this is probably one of the most overlooked um, aspects about sex that can't be overlooked in sacred sexuality, and that is the practice of nesting. Okay, so when we have regular sex, usually what happens is we'll just get off and then we'll roll over and go to sleep or just go about our day, get dressed, move on, and just, and just let, you know, like really move quickly out of the sex act into back our regular day lives or or we just roll over and fall asleep. During sacred sex, nesting is super important. Now, what's nesting? Nesting is that post-sacred sex moment where you are just being there with your partner or with yourself if you are solo, okay? So you're not a rush in a rush to go anywhere. You're not in a rush to fall asleep. You're not in a rush to roll over and just, you know, do your thing. You are nesting, meaning that you stay in connection with your partner or with the divine if you're solo. You stay in connection with a partner um, for extended periods of time after the ecstatic orgasm has happened, after the session has ended. And this nesting is really important. This is where, again, touch can come in, communication can come in, eye gazing can come in. And maybe you're just lying next to your partner and you're just stroking them, you're just touching them, maybe you're looking at them, maybe you're saying you love them. This nesting is absolutely crucial in cultivating sexual energy. This is especially important for feminine energy, okay? Okay, so if you're having sacred sex with a partner that has dominant, we all have feminine and masculine energy in us, but if you are having um, sex with a partner who is more dominant, feminine dominant, the feminine energy really needs this nesting part. Uh, this is where the feminine energy feels safe, feels seen, feels secure, feels heard. Um, feels held, okay? And so this nesting, super important. It's a very important part of the of, of sacred sex, and it's something to not be overlooked. Stay connected to your partner or to God after sex. Stay connected, communicate, cuddle, touch, uh, talk. Just stay connected before rushing on and just moving on with your day. To go deeper into sexual energy, including how to heal sexual energy or any kind of sexual energy imbalance that you may have in yourself, I shot a whole video on that and I'm going to leave links in the description box below so you can watch that. Go deeper into sexual energy after watching this video. Now over to you. I want to hear in the comments below, have you ever practiced sacred sexuality? I want to hear all about it in the comments below. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube YouTube channel or head over to my website where you can download my popular free guided meditations. And don't forget these videos that I talked about in this one. It'll be great for you to continue viewing. All right, beautiful soul. I love you. I'm out.